up, Cybernix, and welcome back to a new quick win. Today, we're talking about an alternative to Ion Slides because when Ionic version 6 is released, perhaps it's already released by now, Ion and Slides will be deprecated. So, the cool component we all use to create slideshows of images, tutorials, or anything like that. But the good news is we can instead use Swiper, which was anyway always the underlying package, and the usage is kind of basically the same because Ionic just proxied the implementation so you could access Swiper um, and now we're just working directly with Swiper. We're gonna do this, we're gonna build a simple uh, simple swipes, we're gonna use some effects, pagination, the configuration, I'm gonna show you how to use this component instead of Ion Slides. If you're not yet a member, you should definitely check it out, ionicacademy.com, my place to help you with everything Ionic, where you can also access this quick win, link below the video. So now, enjoy the new swiper component or the alternative slider swiper component for the deprecated or soon to be deprecated Ion Slides. If you want to get started with Swiper and you look it up on Google, you will most likely either find this package or if you're already using, uh, looking for something with Angular, you're not gonna find the NGX Swiper wrapper. Now initially I thought, well, I usually really like those wrapper, but um, version 10 will be the last release of this library since it's now obsolete due to the latest Swiper including direct support for Angular. So please, if you're looking for an alternative to Ion Slides, don't use the NGX Swiper anymore. You can see it was updated years ago and we can instead directly use Swiper for Angular. It's pretty easy, um, you're gonna see. We can start today with the blank new Ionic application as always. And this is the only thing we need to do to integrate Swiper, really. Just install Swiper and then we just need to integrate it. For the integration, uh, it follows basically the same scheme uh, like other packages. So wherever you want to use it, uh, in my example here, I will use it in the lazy loaded homepage. I'm going to add the swiper module and add it to the array of my imports. On top of that, we need to import some CSS and we can do this inside of our global SCSS. If you import it like this with a complete swiper bundle, you're gonna have everything that you need. You can as well uh, take a look at this. There are different ways to import different effects, components, controllers, uh, CSS stuff. Well, different things in separate packages. Uh, it's also, you can also find this inside the demo, so you're gonna see uh, which package they are importing. Uh, that can be really helpful. Anyway, in our case, we're just gonna roll with this. Uh, I don't see a big problem right now with that. And that's actually everything that we need for the basic implementation. Now, let's quickly get some swipes into our app. Slides, swipes, swiper, slides, I don't know. What's it called? Um, we can now use the swiper component. Um, we're gonna give it a template reference for a reason that I'm gonna show you in a second. And inside of the swiper component, we can now inject ng templates and use the directive swiper slide. So, no red mark. If you get something with red here, you didn't import wrong, make sure you got it inside the module of your page. And then you can just put whatever you want in here. Let's say slide one, and we're gonna copy this. And we're gonna add, ooh, did this change the color for you as well? Hmm, interesting. We're gonna do this for three slides. Now we got the slides up here, but um, that's actually not working very well. So I can basically slide this and it's not even snapping somewhere and it's leaving completely the view. And the reason is that, well, we don't have any CSS defined and as well, the swiper isn't initialized correctly for some reason that I haven't found out so far, but I found a great answer on Stack Overflow that was using the after content checked function. I think we haven't used that. This function actually runs um, multiple times whenever something changes. Um, and we're gonna use this to access our view child. Uh, we gave it the swiper name, swiper, actually there should be, yeah, exactly, a swiper component that you can import from the package, that's gonna make uh, our life in the end a lot easier. 
Since the ng after content check runs a few times, we should check if this dot swiper is actually already defined. If not, we shouldn't trigger what we want to do right here. But then we can go ahead with this dot swiper and update swiper. We're going to have to pass in some uh, values, so just use an empty object. And if we now refresh this, we see we get this snapping behavior and it works just a lot better. Now it works like Ion Slides basically. On top of that, perhaps we want to use the full page. Uh, let's quickly cover this. If we inspect our application, let's make this a bit bigger, uh, we can see the underlying structure of the swiper. It's basically uh, a swiper container out here and a swiper wrapper around the actual swiper slides. So each of them is now uh, the class swiper slide. Therefore, for the container uh, outside, let's put a fixed height and width to use the whole view. But that's not going to be enough uh, for the actual slide, but I can actually now slide here. That's pretty cool. Um, but still, the slide itself hasn't this center text. We can do this with Flexbox quite quickly, display flex, uh, align items and justify content center to center the text. Hmm, why isn't this working? That's the regular way of centering stuff. Well, it turns out that injecting these styles isn't working with a regular view encapsulation. To make this work, you can go back to your home page and set the encapsulation to view encapsulation none. That basically means Angular isn't uh, interfering with the classes added to your objects, um, no shadow DOM, nothing, basically just like Angular wouldn't even be there. It's not always appropriate in some places, it might lead to problems with other components, so you gotta be a bit careful, um, perhaps you should wrap your own uh, swiper implementation in a component where you use this kind of view encapsulation to uh, have it outside of Angular, uh, other Ionic components, so that might be necessary. But as you can see now with that change, our CSS to the slides is actually applied. We see here our swiper slide CSS using Flexbox and centering our content. Okay, that's sometimes even uh, enough for a basic case of, let's say, uh, building an introduction. But of course, I want to show you a few more things. So let's talk about the configuration, the pagination and events. You might be used uh, to passing in a configuration here. And if you check out the documentation, can we find this somewhere once again? Um, you're going to notice that within here, they have basically everything here on the component. And yes, you can do that. And no, I'm not a fan of that. Um, there are really a lot of settings you sometimes need to set for the swiper and I really don't want to have this in my HTML. So instead of doing this, um, we can just pass in a config. I don't know why this isn't very well documented on, on the Angular page because it's really that easy. And the cool thing now is uh, I have, I'm not sure if this was working with Ion Slides before, but we can now even use the swiper. Um, I think the swiper options interface. Let's see. Uh, from uh, I actually don't know where this comes from. Let's see. But that looks pretty good. So now we can get a quick view. Yeah, we get a view and you can find out all the available values. For example, things that we usually used uh, stuff like slides per view. And that feels so good with code completion. I always felt bad when I was writing this configuration for, and injecting it into Ion Slides. Um, so let's do this. Having two slides per view, a bit of space between and pagination with the dots at the bottom. Uh, for that, let's get uh, three more slides. Uh, three, four, five, six. And if we save this, we should now already see the effect of our configuration, right? We got two slides in every view, but uh, we still don't have any kind of pagination. And to use pagination, you need to import other um, tools. What do they call them? Modules? Maybe, nah, maybe not modules. Um, and use them with the swiper core. 
So we're gonna import the. Uh, actually, this is outside of the bracket swiper core from swiper slash core. And on top of that, we're gonna import some objects. We're gonna use pagination and we're gonna do more in the end. And now inside of our page, we can go ahead with swiper core. Uh, oh, hello, where's my swiper core dot use. And you can pass in an array of things that your swiper implementation on this page should use. For example, the pagination. If we save this and go back to our application, we now see those classic dots down here, just like we used to from the ion slides component. Um, if we set this to false, I guess uh, we won't see anything anymore. Oh, this is so cool. I got a new keyboard and it sometimes randomly turns off. That is so funny. Um, I don't know if you ever encountered this, but your keyboard turning off while you're typing, trying to develop, and then it starts and stops again. That is so much fun. I could maybe I could. Okay, so we got faults in here. Uh, if we use faults for the pagination, it will be gone once again. But of course, we're gonna keep this to true. Uh, if I can type that word. Okay, that is the configuration and the pagination. Now, in terms of events, uh, we can also do this from the configuration, but. <laughs> I don't know why, but for events, I feel like it's it's kind of better to use them directly on the component. Um, maybe because we don't have that many events. Um, for example, slide changed, a very common event. You could then go ahead and build your little function. Um, let me quickly bring this in because this is really like the most boring function. And then we should see whenever we change the slide, uh, unexpected closing tag, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the slide changed. And within that change block, you got access to basically everything from the, the slides, the index, progress, uh, well, every, everything that you can imagine. And that should be most of the time enough uh, to build something cool. Now, let's also see how we can use that swiper component from code. Um, I'm gonna show you a quick way of accomplishing this inside the HTML. I'm gonna replace this for now. So, um, I will set allow touch move to false. What this means is you can't do this anymore. This can be really helpful. Uh, don't say nobody's using this. I actually used this in the last Ionic Academy course. So we're gonna see how to make this work and programmatically scroll our slides by using three buttons at the bottom to scroll next, previous, or to uh, toggle it. So let's go to the home page and implement our next function. And to go next, we can use the swiper component, but we can't uh, use anything directly on it. I tried to find something, but nothing was working until I found that we need to access the swiper reference. And once you get the swiper reference, you can really do anything. And for example, we can do slight pref reset to, you can do all the things uh, that you want to. So slight next. Uh, with a duration, you can even have a callback, uh, all the things that you're used to from uh, Ion Slides as well. And of course, if next works, slide previous works as well. Also, um, I thought we could also make this more dynamic. So let's say touch allowed is false in the beginning and with our center button, we can toggle this by simply setting the allow touch move property on the swiper reference to either false or true. So let's see, right now I can't do any kind of sliding here, but I can still use the buttons to slide through my application. Now this should hopefully toggle this and now I'm able to do these cool things once again. Now it's locked again, but I can still use the component programmatically with these events. And I think that's pretty cool. I uh, usually really need to get full control over the components that you're using. And since we can import Swiker per component, we got the interfaces, that makes it really easy for us. Now, as a last thing, like one more thing, <laughs> I just wanted to show you something funny. 
if you check out the swiper um, effects, there are a few cool effects, fade, cube, cover flow, flip, that you can use, uh, which can automatically make your app look pretty good or pretty childish, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so let's change our configuration to pagination true, slides per view, auto, and using the effect cube. And I just added a few random images from Unsplash. Now to use the cube effect, we also need to import it. Uh, let's hope my keyboard now works. The effect cube, and we can just pass this to the array uh, of things that we want to use for swiper right there. And with that in place, let's quickly heat over to our content and change the swiper here to, once again, a swiper using a configuration, nothing special. NG template now with an NG4. You're going to use this in a lot of cases uh, when you want to dynamically create the the uh, slides since I don't think you're going to use ng template like 10 times to create your slides and then an image inside. So let's see the result of this. Um, the images are actually pretty big. So we're going to have a little loading problem here. I'm going to wait a little bit and then <laughs> we can do something like this. Uh, right now, I think, yeah, maybe we should just get rid of this. Uh, and mm, 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 let me think about this. I think we should also get rid of the height here or set it to a fixed value. Okay, that looks already a bit better. Not too good, but I think it's okay. So you see, uh, without doing a lot, we get this cool uh, effect right here. And we could do the same for uh, the cover flow. You would just go ahead and look up the name. It's okay, effect cover flow. You're gonna use it. And then you set the effect to cover flow. And instead of having this cool cube animation, you would now have this uh, Apple inspired cover flow. Uh, you might have to work a bit with the padding of the elements, but. Usually you see multiple of them. Can we get a quick preview of that perhaps? Uh, of course not, this is swipe. But we can, you can see all the demos here. So let's search for cover flow. That was really the one I wanted to show you. It could look like this. Uh, you could also have the cube like we did, but you could also have something maybe helpful like the fade when changing. So that could be really helpful in some cases as well. And once again, adding one of these effects is pretty easy. Um, if you're using the bundle, everything for the pagination and the effects will be injected automatically. If you don't use the bundle for the CSS styling here, you might have to import some separate packages. So go check out the documentation for that and then hopefully enjoy uh, the very cool effects of the swiper instead of ion slides with ionic 6. All right, and that's it for this quick win. I hope you enjoyed the quick overview about the swiper component and how to use it with Ionic Angular. If you got any questions about the implementation or perhaps want to see a real use case with this component, like a tutorial uh, with the slides, so introduction like we had before, or perhaps a, a image, call out, box, preview, slideshow, whatever you want to call it, gallery, um, just let me know below in the comments and of course leave a like for that new video. Hopefully this component will help you to make the transition to Ionic 6 and future versions Ionic 7, 8 even easier as you can just rely on this without any wrapper and just using the direct swiper component. I hope you enjoyed this. I will hopefully catch you next week inside our latest and greatest tutorial. So have a great week and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>